we've been talking about this morning about dog smells and um, how to make your dog smell better. That's right. And we've got Joe from Butch and Bess in the uh, in the UK. I was going to say in the overseas from overseas. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, Joe, tell us it's quite different for you to be doing a perfume for dogs. Well, I also love smells. I'm smell and scent obsessed and love perfumes and perfumery and we kind of put two things together that we saw there was a big gap in the market for pet grooming products that were really natural like so when, when, when you sometimes when a dog goes to a groomer they get like sprayed with a perfume at the end usually like baby powder or some kind of um very generic scent so usually they've got alcohol in them and all sorts of chemicals and we wanted to create something that would smell absolutely amazing that people would want to wear it even on themselves but, but everything would be completely natural. Argan oil, you know, that's used by hairdressers as well, aloe vera for the skin, and oatmeal extract. And we created five scents. Tell us about the five different scents. What are their names? We created our Mandy scent, which is called Butch Leather. And that one is the older dog for man bags and handbags. And then we created Bess, our female scent. And then Stinkerbell is for dogs like mine who go to the park and usually roll in something revolting. <laughs> And it's got eucalyptus and cedarwood, which um, is an antibacterial agent. See, how do the dogs react? Because, you know, dogs do like to smell like um, the stuff that they roll in in the park. It's a very good question. There's some research that shows that dogs actually have, well, you know, they have like 200 million olfactory sensors. And so they're very sensitive to smell. But also dogs respond to essential oils, certain smells that are actually quite healing. One of the big um, rescue centers here in London did some tests on essential oils and have actually put little sachets of essential oils next to the dog's kennels. And certain dogs went to certain smells, whether it was cedarwood or lavender or rose. It was actually calmed them. Because it always is, isn't it? Especially on a Thursday, knowing that Friday's so close. And then the weekend, whoop, whoop, okay. I can't believe it. It's been whoop, whoop. That's a terrible noise. 25 past. Whatever you do, don't do it again. Whoop, whoop. Oh. Seven on Radio Hauraki. Joe from Butch and Bess back with us, creating a line of perfumes for dogs. So I know that certain perfumes match me and my skin and my oils. Do you, have, do you need to match the perfume to the dogs the same way that you match perfume to, to humans and their skin? Actually, there's about 17 different essential oils that make up each fragrance. But it is possible to make pet perfumes. For instance, if you love Angel or Chanel, you can actually replicate these smells. But we've chosen not to do it because we want going down the natural path. And if you do that, you have to synthetic scents. I don't need my dog smelling like Chanel because it might not be the best thing for her. It'd be a bit odd if you're walking down the street and someone says, oh, you're wearing Chanel. And you say, no, no, my, my dog is. Good on them. You see a hole in the market, just... Jump on in and make perfume for dogs. And if you if you have a friend who has a dog that smells particularly bad, they have a uh, they have a, a Christmas fragrance. Yes, Santa paws. <laughs> um, if you'd like to purchase that, I'm sure you could do so online. Yeah, just look up Butch and Bess. And, Butch uh, and Bess. Mm, yep. mm. Bye bye. I'm going to get you Stinker Bell. Oh, for Christmas. what? Or Butch leather. Look, you choose. Radio Hauraki.